Hello and welcome to the Qubit Guy podcast, brought to you by Classic, the quantum algorithm design company. My name is Yuval, and my guest today is Ethan Barmes, quantum lead at Deloitte Netherlands. Ethan and I spoke about a new World Economic Forum initiative on quantum computing, on the impact of quantum on cybersecurity, and much more. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please let us know how we did by emailing hello at classic.io. That's hello at classiq.io. Hello, Itan, and thanks for joining me today. Hi, Yuval. Thank you very much for inviting me. Absolutely. So who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Itan Bromes. I'm um, uh, a physicist uh, by training. Um, after finishing my PhD, I moved into cybersecurity. And uh, for the past two years, I've been at the Deloitte uh, cyber team. Uh, my role at Deloitte is divided into two. On the one hand, for about 80%, I'm uh, a cybersecurity consultant fo- focusing on, on the impact of quantum technologies on cyber. Uh, and for the other 20%, I'm in an innovation project within Deloitte uh, on more on the quantum algorithm side. Uh, and as of uh, two months ago, I'm also a, a project fellow for the World Economic Forum, where Deloitte uh, helps the forum on quantum technologies. That sounds like you have a 120% job, but <laughs> so let's, let's start diving one by one. So you, you mentioned that uh, the majority of your time is spent on cyber. Is that the quantum impact on cyber or is just cyber in general? Yeah, so I'm, I'm generally in the cyber team. We have, um, at Deloitte, we have in different geographies, we have uh, uh, very large cyber teams um, and it's cyber in general. I would love that one day we will do, most of our work will be on quantum, but that's uh, definitely not the case uh, yet. Uh, So we do a lot of, um, in my case, uh, cryptography related projects. Uh, And in the past, well, I would say one to two years, uh, more and more quantum related projects. When you speak to customers, do they worry about quantum and the impact on cyber? I mean, they must have read that uh, RSA code is going to be broken and no one is going to be able to use this and that kind of encryption. Is that something that reaches customers? Are they worried about it? Um, absolutely, yes. And you can also see um, a very interesting development in the past few years that um, as the you know, as quantum becomes uh, more mature and we have quantum computers with more qubits and we can do more with, the, with these machines, uh, then also the negative aspects are becoming more, uh, more visible. Uh, there was an interesting point in 2019 with the Google experiment, the quantum supremacy, uh, that there were actually already quite a few publications about how this machine could break uh, cryptography, which is, of course, not true. Uh, but that was, uh, that was a big buzz. And it was good that we um, kind of put it out quickly because uh, you know, it was just not true. Uh, but it does, it does ra- raise awareness and people are becoming more um aware of it and also more interested in it which is uh, definitely a good development what do you tell customers when they ask you about it do you tell them oh don't worry it's 10 years out or do you tell them well don't worry immediately but this is what you're going to have to do and here's how deloitte could help you i mean what what is the standard answer in this case yeah so we've developed kind of uh, a model for this and um Presenting the two extremes, one of them is uh, we call it the the ostrich effect, putting your head in the sand and trying to well, ignoring it, <clears throat> and the other one is uh, running around and uh, you know looking for solutions. Uh, and we believe in a, what we call a responsible approach, uh, because eventually, as much as quantum is a, a fascinating technology that may be uh, uh, largely misunderstood, um, the cybersecurity aspect it's a threat just like any other threat in cybersecurity. And you need to do proper uh, risk management and analyzing the threat and finding the right way for your organization to to deal with it. So we are trying to peel out uh, the hype uh, and to make it more concrete and more uh, explainable in, in simple words and to really understand what it means. Cyber is interesting because when you think about the impact of quantum on various industries, 
usually the focus is on the positive side. Oh, you can discover new molecules, you can do supply chain pro optimization better, you could do better quantum machine learning. But on cyber, it's been on the negative side. Oh, you, you'll break this code and so on and so on. Do you see positive implications of quantum computing on cybersecurity? That is a great question. And um, there are at least two aspects that um, are fairly well known on this. And one of them is the uh, random number generation. And the other one is QKD, uh, quantum key distribution. <clears throat> and uh, some people present QKD as the solution for the negative aspect of, uh, of, of quantum computing. Um, and it's a very interesting topic. Uh, and I think that it's not uh, completely decided yet. There is an interesting kind of rivalry between uh, mathematicians and physicists, uh, mathematicians, you know, cryptographers, uh, realizing that there is a problem with the current cryptography. And then uh, the physicists, physicists coming in and, and providing a solution. And then the cryptographers uh, saying, um, you know, you're a physicist, you don't know anything about cryptography. So I think a lot of it is, um, is, is maybe even a language barrier. Um, and again, in the past few years, there's been a lot of discussion about this. Um, and I think the industry is becoming more mature and we are zooming in to specific problems and see how these kind of technologies can help. Uh, so at the beginning, it was presented as a, you know, a solution for everything. And now the discussions are much more focused uh, to seeing what situations, uh, you know, specific solutions can be uh, the proper solution. So this is one aspect that is very interesting. Um, the other one is random number generation which is extremely important for, for cryptography. If you cannot generate random numbers, then the rest well, literally just doesn't work. Um, and some companies, so there is a quantum method to generate real random numbers. Uh, it's very easy to explain. It's just because of the nature of quantum mechanics, which is uh, non-deterministic. Um, so you can generate these numbers, um, how much is this going to be used? It's more of a business question because if it costs so much to generate a classical random number, which might be not 100% random, uh, it really depends on this new technology, how cheap it's going to be because eventually it has to be economical. But both of these aspects of random number generation and quantum key distribution uh, are definitely in the, in the spotlight. Some people have spoken about the quantum equivalent of fuzzing, you know, the ability to analyze multiple paths as a way to uh, find perhaps uh, uh, weak spots for intrusion detection or bug fixing. Do you see that as uh, relevant to quantum as well? I think that's a more of a general statement. So, you know, when we talk about quantum machine learning, um, if we find the right methods to do machine learning uh, with quantum algorithms, it will have impact on machine learning in general. Uh, so, you know, one application can be uh, anomalies and intrusion, intrusion detection. Uh, I haven't seen, you know, serious attempts to, uh, to do things very specific uh, for cyber. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe it's me, but I don't think that is, uh, that is a, very mature topic uh, at the moment. So just before we leave cyber, just talk about uh, random number generation again. Obviously, there are random numbers generated today in, in very many algorithms. And even though they're not truly random, how much better is it to have a truly random, random number? How much improvement? How could you quantify or explain to a customer why they need a different random number generator? Yeah, that's, a, that's again, a good question and uh, not a very easy one to solve uh, or to, to answer. <clears throat> it's again, the difference between theory and practice. Um, in theory, having numbers that are predictable completely breaks. You can have really good cryptography, but if you generate, let's say to encrypt two messages, uh, two different messages, if you generate the same random number, 
then an attacker could compare them and derive the private key and com completely break the, uh, the, the encryption behind it. Uh, so in theory, the numbers you generate have to be 100% random. Uh, in practice, these attacks are not, not that trivial and it's not necessarily that, uh, so you know, an attacker would see an encrypted message um, and has to do the analysis and to find messages that were encrypted with the same random number. Uh, so it's not that if you don't have a perfect random number generator, then uh, it will be broken with 100% certainty. Um, and again, it depends on the application. So how much uh, is breaking a certain message? Uh, how, what's the value of it? You know, if it's uh, breaking blockchain, for example, and stealing all bitcoins, uh, that is that is worth a lot of money. Uh, if it's just one message that if it's broken, it's uh, it's not the end of the world, then it's it's just putting a price tag to to these random numbers. I think that in general. There is also uh, an interesting development in quantum random number generation, uh, new methods that also give you uh, certifiable random numbers. And that is also important for, for example, compliancy. So you need to show that your uh, random, random numbers are random. And if there is a way with quantum uh, to do it in, in a simpler way, uh, then it's um, it can be very beneficial. You mentioned that eighty percent of your time is spent on cybersecurity, and then uh, there's another portion that you spend on quantum algorithms. Uh, is that more of an internal research project, or do you work with customers on that? Could you elaborate a little bit on that side of your uh, activity? Yeah, so um, at Deloitte, so Deloitte is a, is a global company with, uh, I think it's about 300,000 uh, employees. Uh, and on the quantum front, we have uh, multiple teams in different geographies. Um, and usually these teams focus on different areas. So we have people focusing on uh, finance applications and uh, quantum chemistry uh, and quantum machine learning. Um, and here in the Netherlands, where, where I am, um, we do more support. So you know, my, my background is in physics, um, and we've done a lot of work on understanding how these uh, algorithms work. Um, so I'm, I'm doing more support uh, of the team. So we have uh, you know, discussions between the, the different teams. We have uh, very different backgrounds. So we would have some people with, you know, pure machine learning background, data scientists with less knowledge on quantum. Uh, and then me and some other people with a, a stronger, let's say theoretical background, uh, we, help, we help them also to understand um, you know, how these things work, work exactly. So you also see that uh, the diversity in background is, is very important. And something that in quantum in general, I think that the whole field uh, definitely started with physicists um, and you see that it's getting more mature. Everyone is focusing on what they're good at. So physicists and engineers would do the, the, the hardware. Um, I think that even mathematicians might be the, the best people to, uh, uh, to understand the algorithms. Um, data scientists need to use it. So they also need to understand it to a certain level um, and Putting all these different backgrounds together is really what makes this uh, successful. And this is the approach that we're taking. At, at Classic, we think that's a big problem because it seems to be a shortage of people who understand quantum information science. Uh, it's very difficult to, to find a quantum information scientist and it's even more difficult to find one that are also understands supply chain or chemistry or cybersecurity. So we think that allowing people to write algorithms even if they're not uh, quantum information science experts, is very important. Do you share that view? Yeah, I, th I think that's a great point. Um, and yeah, I've been thinking a lot about this. And so I've taught the basics of quantum algorithms to a lot of people with no background in physics um, <clears throat> to you know, different levels of, of success. Uh, and you know, a, a user of a certain technology now, when you drive a car, you don't have to understand how, how an engine works, right? Um, 
but it is useful to uh, maybe maneuver in, in a certain way to understand the physics of, of driving. So you need to understand it to a certain extent. Uh, and I think that quantum computing is also a topic that some people are afraid of. Um, you know, people expect explanation about you know, what is superposition, what is spooky action at a distance. And these things are not necessarily needed in order to use this technology properly. So I think it's very important that um, a lot of companies you know, work on finding the right way to teach people to a certain extent, but also filter what is not necessary. Uh, and our trainings for um, quantum computing for uh, data scientists or computer scientists, and then you focus on specific things that are relevant. Uh, and if people are interested in quantum in um, uh, spooky action in this sense, that's fine. But it's you need, you need to stay focused on the things that you need to know, and then bring in your own expertise and your knowledge uh, to kind of bridge the gap. Excellent. And As we get the, 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 the way to do it, I, I don't have a clear answer for that. So there are different approaches and. Uh, uh, and it's something that I think as the, as the field matures, uh, we'll uh, fine tune it uh, to make it more successful. As we get close to the end of our discussion today, you briefly mentioned that you're starting an activity with the World Economic Forum. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, and that's also uh, an interesting development um, in these kinds of technologies that become more well, mainstream. It's maybe a bit going a bit too far, but getting more attention. Um, definitely on the cyber side, it's something that policymakers uh, need you know, to form an opinion about. Um, and the technology is now mature enough that organizations like the World Economic Forum uh, are picking this up. And that, that is a very welcome um, development. Um, and so the World Economic Forum is starting a, a large program on this topic and this includes the more the application side, so the positive aspects that, that you mentioned earlier, uh, as well as the cybersecurity aspect. Um, and we are helping the, the forum uh, with this program. It's something that is just starting now. Uh, there, will, there is um, uh, a launch of the program in somewhere in, uh, in September, um, and we're still working on defining the activities and. Uh, um, and the goal is to really bring, bring it to the attention of the, you know, more this, the, the executive at companies, policymakers, um, filtering the noise on the one hand, focusing on the, the, the important aspects and uh, uh, bring more clarity for, uh, uh, I'll say, for society on this topic. It certainly sounds like a sign of uh, starting to go mainstream. So that's very welcome. Uh, Itan, how can people get in touch with you to learn more about your work? Um, I think that's probably uh, LinkedIn is uh, is the best way um, uh, to get to me. Um, I think that Googling my name will probably get some hits. Uh, we, we've published a number of articles recently, uh, one of them um, specifically about the threats of quantum computing uh, to Bitcoin that turned out to be very successful. So. Um, uh, if you're interested in that topic, then uh, yeah, look it up. And, and if there are any questions, then uh, definitely reach out to me. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, thank you for inviting me.